Hey guys, Paul McLean here, and I've got a special treat for you. You know, every once in a while, I throw in like this special edition where I want to get somebody on that's crushing it, right? That's going out there, and they're doing what, if you did, would take you to the next level. Now, telesales has made a big difference in our business. You know, it's just really allowed us to open up another avenue to grow in personal production. It's opened up another avenue to serve more clients, and um, some have got a hybrid approach. Some are just out there still sitting face to face and we're doing telesales that all works right and i just believe that i think everything works a little bit nothing works all the time but today guys i got two guests that i promise you will serve you and serve you well they're out there doing telesales at a very high uh, level we're going to get into the practicality of what they're doing but also i want you to hear their story and how they got started because i think it'll encourage you to go out there and just cast as many seeds as possible because you never know what will actually grow. So if I want to welcome uh, Tristan, good to have you on board, bro. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, good to have you, man. Marcus, good to have you, bro. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hey, it was a delayed cloud, but we made it longer. You know, <laughs> we made up for it. I'd give you a pump, do we a little across the table. But um, good to have you guys on board, man. Good to have you in the studio. And um, I know that... Uh, yeah, you guys, your story, we were just talking a little bit about it, but if you could kind of, Tristan, talk about how you found Family First Life, because I think this is how, like, the best people, and I'm not trying to discredit somebody that comes from whatever whatever platform, but some kind of, you know, warm market, sphere of influence, like a, just a, you know, a gradual conversation that just kind of happens is usually the, the way we find good people. And Tristan, you're doing really well. Like, you're helping, you've been here how long now? Uh, three months next week. Three months. Okay. How many how many clients did you serve last month? Forty four. Forty four. Mm-hmm. Been here for ninety days. Mm-hmm. Well, you were with a prior. You, you said you had your license before FFL, right? You're just working somewhere else. Yeah. So I had life and health, but I was primarily using health. Mm-hmm. Um, was getting fed live transfers, all that good stuff. Uh, another company, basically. And then I had realized that life was kind of just left on the table. So when I started doing it, I worked for a smaller brokerage, lower compensation, and. The main goal was to build an office, and that's what they said they would do, but never really delivered. What was your perception of life when you were focused mainly on health? Like, how did you view the life side of it? Like, what was your thought process on it? I didn't know a lot about it, to be honest. I knew that um, I didn't know how much better it paid, (laughs) to be honest. But uh, I didn't really have much experience on it. I'd been with another company, like, right out of college, um, Pyramid Scheme. Mm -hmm. but I won't name any names, but yeah, they, they work your warm market and they sell all your warm market and then you're left with nothing. (laughs) Then you got to go out there and do the exact same thing. Yeah. 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 Um, which by the way, just a commercial, right? This is just a a quick commercial break. If you're (laughs) working for an IMO and they don't have leads, quit now. I think that's just great <laughs> advice. Leave. Just quit. You can say, do what? You work here. You can work anywhere else. Anywhere else would be better than where you're at now. That's just, that's just like, you only have so many cousins and sisters and aunts, unless you guys are going to go actively produce at a very high level. Um, as far as reproduce, you, you want to go work somewhere else. But, um, so Tristan, you got on, you were, you were in the health side, um, got introduced to life. Talk about how you're introduced to the life side. How did that come about? To be honest, I don't really know. Um, health was in its slow season. and I Well, how did been... you guys meet? All right, so we met through Shelby, his girlfriend. Uh, I was at a party for one of our friend's graduation. She just got her master's, bachelor's, something like that, and uh, was talking about how I was with this brokerage in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, Shelby was telling me how well Marcus was doing, and I asked for his number. Um, one thing led to another. I hit him up. He talked to me about my compensation rate, and uh, he was like, dude, I feel bad for you. So. Yeah, I, I did. I'm like, man, I'm glad I got in the industry when I did and with the right company. Yeah. Hey, dude, think about that. I think sometimes when when you're actively recruiting, dude, you sell more because, like, it just keeps your perspective right. And I always say that, like, your performance is, is closely tied to your level of appreciation. So if you can have – more appreciation for like your comp just where you're at like what you're doing mm-hmm. like you'll perform better with what you've got absolutely and when you start recruiting man like marcus like like you helped him sell more that week because he got the phone you're like dude that fool got that kind of comp man like <laughs> and you feel bad with, like he was sincere like dude i just want to help you like i'm gonna just double you right quick like come, come on yeah up. let me give you a hand <laughs> up man let me give you a true shot um so so you guys got connected that way mm-hmm. talked about comp you're intrigued because you're like a lot more money to go yeah, out there and serve some clients. My comp, and I'm like, I'm there. Like, what's the catch? Like, what's what's going on? And I just didn't know any better. That's all it was. I was captive, low comp, 
Um, they told me they would feed me like warm leads, and that's why I was taking the captain sure. position. I was calling a government cold call list, getting in the door with Medicare. Were you paying for leads? No, I didn't have to pay for them, but they just weren't like warm. I, yeah, but were, see, think about this: like you, you weren't paying for them, but yeah, the but quality. you were paying for them. Yeah, I was meaning that for like, them, like sorrow. And well, no, low comp, low comp, low comp, <laughs> low yeah. comp man. Like so, when somebody says, "Man, I got, I don't got to pay for leads over here." It's like, well, dude, you got a thirty percent comp. And that's seventy percent lower, and you go out and serve twenty families. Oh, you're paying significantly for those things. Yeah, 100%. it's just the way they kind of package it, you know. When that I was that was a big thing when I brought him on. We were talking about leads because he wasn't used to buying leads and at all. He's like, man, I gotta, you know, I gotta spend five hundred dollars on leads. I don't know if I want to do that. And I called him like three days in a <laughs> row, like, dude, I don't know if I can drop that five hundred, bro, because my last right. company, I was, I was non captive, I was ten ninety nine independent, but they were feeding me live transfers, the health company. Sure. So, and it was an easier product to to sell to market. To. I mean, it was Medicare, so usually they weren't paying anything over, just changing plans. But my compensation reflected that. Right. Yeah. Wait, how did you get your mind right on the whole investing in leads? Like, what kind of finally like the perspective that shifts like, all right, man, I'm good with that. I think I saw so much in the training videos, how they were just like, that is the lifeblood. Like you need to do it. You do what you got to do to get 500 bucks to invest in leads, do what you got to do to keep and don't ever decrease the amount you spend on leads. And it makes sense, but it was just, I kind of had to just take a leap of faith and be like, all right, literally put 500 on my girlfriend's credit card. And on my birthday, and then, bro, that week. Hey, you guys both got good help. girls, man. Your girl, Marcus, <laughs> is your best recruiter because she, she found is. Tristan. She is. Tristan's girl supplied him Paying with, yeah, leads. yeah, helped him start his business. <laughs> you guys got good ones, man. She yeah. believed it, dude. It was, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, you know, think about, like, I think it's easy to, to have the wrong perspective on, on trade-off. And, like, I, I think having this trade-off mindset is really helpful in building a business. What I mean by that is, like, by nature, and I, I read this somewhere, like 40,000 of our thoughts are negative each day or something crazy. Like we just, we're just most of our thoughts, 80% of them are negative. And so like you get going and, and the comp's so great, right? You get to go out there and serve these clients, these leads. But then it's easy to think like, well, man, I got to invest 500 bucks in leads or a thousand bucks. Man, I got to, th- this is not as easy of a sell as the, as the, the hell side. And our mind just naturally goes to like, yeah what what the name opposed to well there's a trade-off like yes maybe that sale is more simplistic because it's health related or whatever or maybe i don't have to buy leads but i get high comp over here and this is what it's going to equate to and balancing it out and i think more people right now just if they sat and thought like whatever decision you're in a crossroads right now like where you're at this bypass like do i choose to go here choose to go here do i stay or do I go with, with whatever? It could be with hiring your first staff. It could be with um, booking more appointments, investing more in leads, running an extra day, um, whatever that might be. Like ask yourself, is it is it worth it? Like there's a price to pay both ways. Balance it out and kind of have this trade-off mindset of like looking at it and then being moved from there. I think that makes a big difference when, as far as making good decisions that are going to grow you. Um, so Marcus, let's talk about like the telesales, man. Like so... Um, in the beginning, you weren't crushing it. No, not really. It was a roller coaster, really, because I felt like I was taking two steps forward, three steps back. You know, I was profitable, but I felt like I was just putting in a lot of activity and I wasn't seeing the results. But I knew it was because my my skill my skill set wasn't there because I come from a tree trimming background. Like I knew nothing about sales at all, and coming to you know to insurance, it was a huge learning curve. Like for for him, he he hit the ground running like only thing he had to get over was you know buying leads um but for me i was in the field getting crushed for about a couple months i mean i was i was doing decent you know i was i was still paying the bills and you know doing what i had to do but um it wasn't until i transitioned into telesales where i was like really profitable and i think what, what was super the big difference for you? Like, when, when it, it was it the timing going through the process that maybe you were just right there at that point in time where it was it was going to pop anyways and it just happened to pop because you moved there? Or for you, did it just work out a lot better based off of the way you kind of saw it? What, what do you think allowed that to happen? I honestly think it was just my lack of experience in the beginning because, like, I didn't have the word tracks. I didn't, I didn't have the skill set in the beginning because I think today if I went back in the field, I would crush it because mm-hmm. I'm better now. 100%. You know, so I think that's, that's basically what it was. But I, I think 
telesales is definitely super duplicatable. Um, but I do recommend going in the field for a little bit and see, seeing people face to face. But telesales has changed the game for me. Like I don't even sell any insurance in California and I've been living here, you know. So leads are not an option. So if anybody's like, that's the thing where I want to go write more business, which I don't think there's many areas that that's the case because CRM has got, you know, so plentiful with like different, you know, vendors and resources. But that does open up the whole country to your backyard, like everywhere now. Like you can go help a client in Michigan or Indiana or wherever. It's a whole backyard is or the whole country's your backyard, which I love that. Yep. Um, yeah, it's no longer how long you can drive that day or anything. You can it's switch states, work time zones. It's it's cool. Yeah, and just like anything, there's a trade off though, right? Yeah. yeah, like you don't have to go drive time and all that kind of stuff, but you gotta like what's the negative on the telesales side, like what's the trade off? Cause it's with everything. Is it more difficult to build, to, to close, right? Yeah. Is, it, is the ratio absolutely. a little lower on closing? I mean, what is that? What's the I, difference? I, you I, see? I would say building the why and, and then kind of figuring out the need and just figuring out why the client filled the form out and, and getting them to trust you, building that credibility, like sending your, sending them your license and image of you, your driver's license, like you have to do all those things to build that trust because you're asking for some personal information. As in, you know, you get the objection a lot. I don't want to give that over the phone. Sure. I don't want to get my social security over the phone. Let's, want, let's get in that. I want to see how you overcome that. Let's, let's, let's touch base on that. Um, so when somebody gives me the objection, you know, um, you know, I don't want to get my banking. Okay. So, so John, I, I understand that. So have you ever applied for life insurance before? No. Okay, so yeah, as far as that, that's pretty standard because what the what the insurance carriers are going to do, they're going to validate your information. They're going to validate that your banking information matches your social security and your driver's license to make sure nobody's trying to get insurance in your name, right? Because they, they don't want you know any insurance fraud or anything going on. It's it's pretty standard. So, um, you know, go ahead with the count and routing number starting with the routing number. I mean, so just very simple. You you kind of let them know, and then you just move right forward. Yeah, and I think that's the thing with most people. They mess it up when they they answer whatever objection it might be, but then they, then they pause. Like what that's going to allow the client to do or what's going to encourage a client to do is just ask another question. So you always want to answer a question with a question. And so that's applicable mm -hmm. in both ways, but that, 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 that you took perfect control over that. Like you made sense of it and then it was, it's okay to be assumptive because once you kind of asked a question, have you ever dealt with this? And they said no, and you kind of explain to them because all they're needing is clarification. Mm -hmm. Like what I realized, and this is kind of how I shifted in my mind, Marcus, when it kind of, when I think I started getting better with objection handling, was it's not an objection. It was more the fact that they just needed a clarification. Yeah, they don't understand it quite. They don't understand yeah. it. Because it changed my mind when I saw it, like, man, I got an objection. It was like I was in a fight. Like I, like I had to overcome something. Opposed to, nah, man, like, because an objection was means it seemed like there's a hindrance or a block from them getting the of what you're trying to service them with that value of that product, or whatever. It's a block in that that I have to overcome or jump over. But in my mind, I shift and said, no, this is this doesn't devalue how important it is for the client. They're not saying this isn't important. They're simply saying I don't understand. And so all I got to do is clarify, mm -hmm. and then go back to where I left off, ask a question, stay in control, and move forward because people want to be led and guided and directed by somebody that has confidence, that is in control, and that can lead them. And, and that's exactly how you did it, man. I mean, that was perfect. And that, that, that's objection handling one-on-one -on -one right there, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Um, what are other, what are some other, and let me, let me just say this real quick too with, with um, you know, telesales and then and then face-to-face. -face. Like, guys, it, it is a trade-off. Like, if you're face-to-face, -face, it's easier to get the client to like and trust you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Plain and simple. 100%. So, so that is the downfall. Now, the, the upside is you don't have drive time. You've got more time or if, if you do have more that you, you know, that you wouldn't close to get to your numbers for the week, well, you've got more people to fit in now because you've got less drive time. So, there's, so there's always a trade off, right? If mm -hmm. you've not developed yourself and, and become confident through the process, like for, for you, Tristan, you didn't have the same process as Marcus because you were in similar work already. So the thing is, I was doing straight telesales when I was doing health with that company, and I had actually switched from health to life, and they were making me do in-home appointments. So um, I had recommended telesales, and with COVID and everything, I thought that was probably the wisest way to go, but director of operations wouldn't have it, said persistency would be low. So I was, I was driving. I mean, you know, two hours just there and back from the office, and then whatever you drive – um, to the different parishes in Louisiana. So 
when I got touched with Marcus and he was talking about telesales, that really intrigued me because I had come from a telesales environment with health. So being able to try it with life was definitely intriguing. So, so everybody on here, if you're looking to compare yourself, like this is two prime examples. Like you can't. Like meaning that if somebody can come, if somebody tr- Tristan would see how many families you served, and they would compare themselves to you, and they could feel inferior, right? Because look at oh my, like I suck, I'm terrible, I'm not any good at it. Because Tristan helped 44 families like in his first month basically, and so I'm not any good. This might not work out. Maybe that's a sign. Maybe I can't do this. But what they don't know is that they didn't start with what you started with. You started with some experience that was very closely aligned with what we were already doing. Same so market. You already you already yeah. cut your teeth. You're already going through the learning mm-hmm. curve. You had already gone through that when you started here, Absolutely. right? And then they look at Marcus, and, and it, it took eight months. Was that what it was? Uh, I was in the field for about five months. Five months. Well, eight yep. months sounds better. Was it five months? Well, five, six five months. months. <laughs> so, so five months. And uh, you could think, like, like, look how good I am. I was killing it. I, I wrote, helped 20 families after my first couple months. Like, look how good I am. It makes you feel superior, right? So now you think you're great because you're comparing yourself to, to Marcus's process. Well, you, you weren't cutting trees before. You know what I mean? Like I was pumping septic tanks. It wasn't like I was closing (laughs) the septic tank. Like I had nobody around me. So, so it was different. That's why you got to run your race. The worst thing you can do is compare yourself to anybody in this business because you don't know where they, where they, what they started with. You have no clue. And I definitely, I struggled with that. I would always, I'm, I'm super competitive, so I always compare myself to other people, but I, I got to realize that I'm, I'm at a certain point in my journey. Like, like I know with my work ethic, they've just been here longer than me, right? And, you know, that, that, that five months in the field, I'm telling you, like, I watch so many podcasts, so much training. I obsess over the training. That's why I developed this skill. So I thought it was imperative to get in the field and, you know, drive two hours to a house and get no showed. I mean, I was, I just had a positive mindset and I don't, I don't, I mean, dealing with that much adversity, I just, did you ever think about quitting? Like I'm just, oh just thinking to work out. Yeah. A couple times I thought about going, going back to, to trimming trees, man, but I, I couldn't do it. I like, I'm glad that something clicked for me. It was like, were you, were you, did you have like a time limit on like, if I, if this doesn't work out for the next X amount of months that I'm going to quit, or were you just like putting your head down, expecting it to work out eventually? So I was, I was telling myself, yeah, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to trim trees full time and then I'll do this part time. That's what I was telling myself, but I'm, I'm just, I'm so grateful that, that so you something started entertaining <laughs> like the idea <laughs> yeah. of like, all right, this is going to work out. I'm going to go part but, um, man, that's the thing. Like it's you, a lot of times how you finally get to that breakthrough. It's not what you, how you expected to get there or the time that you took, you, you expected for it to take to get there. You know, it's just keeping your head down and getting after it. And, um, and it pops, man. Yeah. The secret sauce is just don't give up. That's like, right. Keep, keep going, get around the people, stay around the fire. Like, dude, there's so much truth in them. I think about like, like most of, of like the big success, it's just a compound effect of these small little decisions, like listening to podcasts late at night, listening to podcasts early in the morning, responding in a positive way, not getting way negative. Like it's because of this or this, but no man, like I'm competitive. I got to figure something out. This is on me. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to win. I got to get this thing worked out and being frustrated as you go along which is okay, but not letting it to, to tie to your identity of like, I can't make this work. I'm never going to make this work. You just kept at it. And see, most people look and say, man, look, I knew Mark, he's a killer. Look at what he's doing. And they see the success and they think maybe it was overnight, man. It was a combination of all those different small decisions you made every day that finally boom, pop. Like I always say, man, like your life is not going to be ruined overnight. And it's not going to be a success overnight. It's mm-hmm. compounding effort. It's compounding effort, man. And so that's great how you did it. Tristan, what, what are some objections that you get? Like what's a what's a common objection you get doing telesales? A lot of times it's personal information. So I, I'm pretty good at building rapport. Um, but a lot of times it's getting the social, getting the bank account info. That That's really the main, the main objection. Are you proactive now to yes. try to... 
you like have handle to. that up front. Yeah. So what do the, things do you do that, that kind of help you set yourself up where you don't get it? So to build rapport and also let them know that their personal info is safe, I'm calling them one time. And if they answer on the first ring, great. But if not, I send a text message with my state license I'm working in and my name, basically explain what I'm doing. You know, I need 10, 15 minutes. I'm the field underwriter. That's going to qualify you medically for the best rates in the industry. So you're giving them the idea that they're going to be answering some health questions right off the bat. You know, you're going to have to verify your identity. So I do tell them that I'm saying, so we're going to run what's called medical information bureau check, and we're going to have to verify your identity. Not only that, um, we need to use your social so they know who to pay out when uh, the benefits are collected. So it gives them an idea. And also what Marcus was talking about earlier, um, reminding them what they filled out that form for. So it's asking them right off the bat, what 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 has you looking into this today? You know, did you want to leave money for a beneficiary? Did you want to cover burial or, or both? So right off the bat, you're getting to remember why they filled out that form, why they thought about it in the first place, and who they're doing it for, and it's uh, and building that credibility with the license and all that good stuff. So you have like yeah, I don't get it as much anymore because off the bat, I'm telling them expectations and setting you know uh, a process through with them and. Um, from then on, it's just kind of like, all right, well, I told you from the beginning, so let's let's get to it. Yeah, Anything you want to add to that, Marcus? Yeah, pretty much. So I'll like it's a it's a process, right? So I always mention words like price, budget, financial, like so so they know that eventually I'm going to be asking for some some financial information. So um, so what we're going to do here, John, is um, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your medical, and then a little bit about your financial, and then even when I'm going like. Um, you know, before I get into the medical questions, um, you know, I'll, I'll let them know. So I'll ask them, hey, um, so are you still working full time, part time, retired, disabled? What's that look like? Oh, I'm retired. OK, are you collecting Social Security? OK, perfect. And then uh, do you typically get that like on a prepaid card, like a direct express card? Or do you have an active bank account? Oh, I have an active bank. OK, who do you bank with? Oh, I bank with Chase. Okay, so yeah, and the purpose, you know, the, the reason why uh, I was asking that, John, is because, um, you know, the insurance carriers, you know, so, um, a lot of people receive their Social Security benefits on like a prepaid car, like a direct express car, but because you have an active bank account with a, you know, account and routing number, your your um, your options are still widely available to you because some of the insurance carriers can't validate those prepaid cards, so your options are still widely available to you, so that's good. And then I'll move on through the medical questions. So they hey, already do you know, do that like, to kind of like help you know limit the time working with somebody that, that you're not gonna be able to kind of help them because they don't have an account yeah exactly or choose carriers that accept direct express dude i i remember i had to do that back when i got you know this 10 years ago um we didn't have any direct express like carriers no credit card nothing like you didn't have a checking account bro you ain't getting a policy man right. like, there's no heard, option i had never heard of direct express before ffl yeah yeah never so I, I they you had to have a checking account so i remember i went to this one client's house dude I, I couldn't find the address because I kept passing it back and forth because it was like a little shack. Like, the, it was smaller than this podcast room. I'm not lying. Dude, so I go up and I walk up to this house, and all of a sudden this dog pops out of this, like, door, dude, that's, like, this big. Like, a door for, like, trolls. This dog <laughs> pops out. It's on a chain, dude. It starts flying around this house. This house is so small, dude. It's lapping the house, dude, with its chain. I'm thinking like, and there's an, and I see there's an address on it. I'm like, dude, this isn't a, this is a dog house. No kidding, bro. A human being crawls out, crawls of, the out of the little oh troll. My. And like, I was like, they're like, oh, are you here for the appointment? I was like, oh yeah, I am. Um, oh, by the way, all the programs, um, they give nice discounts. If you got a check in a savings account, who do you bank with? Oh, I don't have no check in account. So, oh, you know what? Unfortunately, I'm not, I was like, exactly. I was out of here. Like, I was, I was thinking about my like visualizing crawling through that door, like the, you know, like <laughs> sitting down on the stump. Yeah, <laughs> dude. And they have this rot wall. was just staring at me the whole time. You know, it already lapped their house seventeen times by the time I got done my two sentences. But um, yeah, man, that, that you you want to be proactive. Like that's that's just being smart. Like asking that, and throwing that out to figure out. Yeah, in the beginning, so you're not wasting up. a whole lot of time. Sure, like, man. Mentioned. Move on to somebody you can serve. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Somebody who wants to help. I love that, man. Um, well, so for both of you guys, the the one thing I want to point out, like the psychology behind, like what why it works so well, is 
going to the why first and make that's a value that's a hot button that's what like that's the emotionality behind it people are moved by emotion like what i see is like everybody makes decisions based off emotion and they try to support it by logic that's why you get some crazy people who are like dude how does that make any sense what well, does it was emotional and they're trying to find something logical to support it so if you can open up the door with the emotion and bringing them back to what caused them to fill it out, that's where most people are missing it. Even with booking appointments, I believe. I was always a guy that said, you know, hey, Marcus, most clients that send this request back in, they want to make sure if they if they die that their family's not going to go through a financial hardship when they pass away or financial burden. Is it fair to assume that's kind of what you had in mind? Yep. Well, yeah, it is. Okay, perfect, man. Now, listen, I'm going to be dispatched. So it wasn't this elongated script, but I'd always throw that in, man, because I wanted to hit them with that you sent this in, man. It wasn't about me. Mm-hmm. I got a million other things I got going on. I got, I could be hanging on my kids, hanging on my family, working with them. I could be doing a million other things, but I called you because you sent this form back in, man. I stopped what I was doing, and I care enough to help people that I'm going to slow down and give you a call and help you out, but it's about you, not me. Yeah. And the psychology. Now, Tristan, what I see from you, man, is like just the way you communicate, it, it's very postured. Um, it's very controlled. It's very confident. It's not this like subservient, like limited, you know, like how can I help you out? Like it's, it's not that you're not a server at, at Applebee's. You sound like you need this. I'm the doctor. You're the patient. I'm in control. And that's just your tonalities there. And so that's another thing that most agents could check out. If you want to get your booking ratio or even closing ratio through telesales is like, what does your tonality reflect? Because it's important, I believe. I believe it's very important. Your tonality is very good, man. It is. It's, it's very, very structured. It's very controlled. It's like almost like I, I, I know that you're confident that you're going to lead me, guide me, and tell me what to do, and I'm okay with it. You yeah. know what I mean? Opposed yeah. to you being unsettled where I think, like, I almost have to step in and take control, ask you a bunch of questions, give you a hard time. Like, I just want you to kind of tell me what to do, which is a big deal. And then the structure, too. Like, Marcus, in the process that you go through and you kind of lay it all out, the expectation's a big deal. So you've built the why. You've got them emotional. They're back to where they, why they, the need and the value of it, the value proposition. And then you give them the expectation, the structure of it, and you lead them with questions. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's about most of it in any type, whether mm-hmm. it's in-home or telesales, man. Mm-hmm. I feel like effectively educating them too helps a lot. So a lot of people don't even know the difference between term and whole life. And if you can give them a brief rundown and explain how these work and explain exactly what happens through the process, because a lot of people think you can just buy insurance, but you do have to qualify. You know, you do have to set up certain things. So I feel like educating them helps a lot too. Hey, do you guys ever, um, like if somebody seems like they're not really trusting you, like they, they don't, they don't really trust that maybe uh, you, you can help them or give them a feedback where they're just kind of like they're not showing that they really are going to allow you to, to guide them and direct them do you ever just kind of stop and give them some education to kind of help build that up I ask them if they have questions I ask them if they took a look at the state license you know uh, did you need me to help you look up how to verify my credentials just whatever I can do to kind of get them settled because mm-hmm. you can tell yeah. I'll actually send them so there's an app called hi hello um, there'll be an image of you, your title, you know, your contact information, and then all your state licenses and everything in PDF form. It's really easy. You just click on the link, you pop up. And I, I find that I tie the, the sale down with that a lot. I'll, you know, get people throwing jokes at me like, oh, yeah, now I know what you look like. So if I need to, you know, come and get you, I'm, I'm you know, right. stuff <laughs> like that. I even, I even had a lady, she was like trying to hook me up with her daughter. I'm like, uh, I'm taking. <laughs> yeah, and you're in. Her daughter's probably not as good of a recruiter, so that's what you got to yeah. tell her, man. I'm sorry, like. Um, so hi, hello. Yeah, hi, okay. hello. Yep, got it. It's, so it's anybody, hi, hello. Yep, it's, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Like, I, I, it's definitely tied down sales. I've got clients for life because of it. I love that, dude. It's huge. That's awesome. And then, like, back to basically building the why. Like, that's gonna you know, have them open up. And then a big question that I ask them is, have you ever experienced any family member or a friend passing and you kind of had to deal with the funeral or the final arrangements? And they're like, yeah, was, okay, yeah. So I'm assuming that was somebody close to you. Um, you know, th- did they have anything put in place, that, you know, to take care of it? Oh, no, they didn't have anything in place. Okay, yeah, my condolences, you know, you know, feel for them, um, you know, because I, I know what it can be like. And I always let them know I tell a story. Um, I've seen both sides of the spectrum. You know, my aunt, she passed away um, back in January from cancer. And, you know, she had a really nice um, 
you know, policy put in place and we were able to make an educated decision. The transition was really easy. She had a really nice, you know, service. The family got together. Um, tombs don't, it was just a really nice transition. It was, it was beautiful. Um, and then on the other side of the spectrum, uh, my brother passed back in 2012, had zero life insurance put in place and it was a financial devastation to the family. We, you know, we still have, you know, family members, you know, owing people money and asking people for money. It, it was kind of, you know, it was one of those things. And I think when you tell people stuff like that and you put them in a place to where this is important, like this is going to make or break your family on the worst days of their life. So I think that opens them up to giving you a lot of information and being trustworthy. You know? Dude, 100 percent, man. That was so good. I mean, like the stories personalize it. You know, the questions will help evoke and bring out the emotion. And you guys have to do that. I mean most people, their close ratio is lower because they don't ask these additional questions. What does it look like? What would happen? What did you want to have happen? Mm -hmm. Those that That's where the sale is made is right there. Like I could actually, in every in-home, when I got done asking those questions, I knew if I was going to help the family out. Just by watching, you know, the emotion and, and knowing that if I did a good job articulating that. And then the story is personalized. And, it, and it's easy to, to do. If somebody's like, you're new and you're like, man, I'm just kind of unsettled. This is uncomfortable. It's supposed to be like that. But but tell stories. Go in with some stories of yourself that you can personalize it. It's no different than public speaking, man. If you want to get, if you're nervous, get up and just tell your story. It makes it, it's the easiest thing you could do in front of people if, you're, if you've never done it before, just tell your story. Well, just tell your story because it personalizes it. And people want to deal with people, right? They don't want to deal with something that's not authentic, that's artificial, that's memorized a bunch of scripts. So if you're nervous have some stories and if you're like i don't got a story tell marcus's story mm -hmm. that's still your story still a story you can say i i, I was listening to my, one of our agents marcus and you could tell that story and give specifics the more specific you are with a story the more sticky it is and the more it'll it'll kind of hit and they'll and they'll and they'll really bring out the most emotion from it when yep. you l give details in it but um that's how you that's that's the sell right there that that's how you do it man yep. i mean that's beautiful um tris anything you want to wrap up with bro Talking about the mindset a little bit so people can sense the energy over the phone. Um, do what you got to do to get your mind right before you start selling, whether it's working out, meditating, because people can feel your intentions over the phone. And if you're genuine and you have cleared your mind beforehand, sales become a lot easier. Great tip, dude. How, yep. do, you, how do you do it personally? Um, so I start kind of late, but it's because, you know, I'm reading my devotional in the morning. I pray. I If I don't work out, I'll meditate one or the other. And uh, I take breaks throughout the day just to clear my head, get back into, you know, a good mindset. Because when you do that, uh, things just go a lot smoother. And you don't, you know, think about things that haven't happened yet. Instead, you just go with it. I love it, man. It That's a good tip, man. Like, renew your mind in the beginning of the day. But, heck, if you need to stop and renew your mind throughout the day, why, yeah. why not? And, you know, thinking back, dude, I did the same thing. I'd always have these sessions. So I'd go from, like, 8 o'clock to, like, 11 o'clock. That was, like, my morning session, mm -hmm. right? And then at the end, I got it to 7 o'clock. And that's 7 to 8, man. I'm telling you, that's a magic hour, bro. Dude, 6 to 8 works. <laughs> there you go. That's even better, why. bro. I like that. I don't know why. It's a magic hour, man. And, and by the way, think about crazy. I, I've said that a bunch of times. We had agents in the office, um, you know, I think it was last Thursday. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm telling her, but I'm telling you seven to eight. That's where, you know, book most appointments. And uh, one agent shows up, Jeremiah, and uh, he booked like six appointments from, from seven to eight. I can't tell you why, but and, I have half my sales, 6 to 8 p.m. Dude. <laughs> oh, in the, well, I'm talking about the morning. You're oh, talking about night? Yeah. I'm talking about at night. Well, night too, yeah, 100%. So my session is like my, my most productivity as far as booking appointments was, was 7 a.m. to like 9 and then from like six o'clock at night to nine, those are my hours where if I looked at how many appointments were booked by far, those hours, those four hours would be just as I'd get more result from those four hours than from like, say, 10 o'clock to, to six o'clock, those other nine hours, eight hours, you know, do you have sweet spots like time, like schedule wise? Yep. What are your I, it's, something, it's something about the, the middle of the day that it's kind of like a dry spell, right? Yeah. But, 10 to but you can make sales back to too. back in the morning <laughs> yeah. and then. Like late at night. When dude, I'm telling chilling. you. So, so Jeremiah gets here from 7 to 8, dude. He books like 7, 8 appointments. You know what I mean? And uh, the, the next like five hours, he only books like four. And everybody, and he be, smokes everybody. That's good. He's going to be day. a stud. He's going to yeah. be a stud. I talked to him. Well, it's because he's coachable, man. Coachability equals he's, freedom. He's young, too. He's 18. He's going to kill it. You know what I mean? And he's just like open. There's no ego. Humility just wants to learn, wants to do it. 
Um, you say some like if you said, hey, this is what you should do that he would pick up on it right away, go out there and execute, um, which is a lot, a lot to be said. Man, that's one of the most success, successful concepts or principles you could have is just coachability, you know, mm-hmm. especially in this business where the people that are giving you the feedback, like they're the ones that have done it and, and they right. want to help. You that's know, right. it's not a common thing. I attribute a lot of my success to their stories, their tips, advice. I'd done it before, but it, there's a learning curve with, through anything, but they helped a lot, man. Well, dude, I've done this 15 years, man, and I've learned a lot today. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, you always learn and grow. Like, I got a lot of stuff that I take from what you guys just said that I'll sh- share and pass on to agents as they reach out to me and say, hey, Paul, what about this? You know, and I'm like, I don't know because I haven't done telesales, but let me tell you what, what Marcus and Tristan do. And that's that's how you grow and develop. You don't got to yep. be the person. You just got to be a surrounded and know – you know, the people that are out there killing it and give the feedback accordingly. So I appreciate you guys joining the day, man. Phenomenal, phenomenal podcast. Guys, go out there and make it a big week. Hey, what tweaks and adjustments could you make? Is there a story that you can add to your telesales, your in-home process? Maybe just one story away that's going to increase your close ratio, right? Maybe it's, it's, it's a little bit of morning time in the morning to, to renew your mind, to spend some time, you know, getting out the old, to, to compartmentalize, to focus on the task at hand, or maybe throughout the day, you know, maybe you get to like one o'clock and you're just like worn out. Maybe you just stop. And I did this every single, every single dial day. I'd stop listening to like a 10, 15 minute podcast, read a little bit and then get back after it. And you get back after it at a heightened focus, a heightened awareness and with more intentionality to make it a big, big day. So guys, go crush it. Appreciate you guys. Make it a big week. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys. Hey, if this served you well and you're like, I want to join Family First Life and I want to be linked up with somebody that can help me in the telesales world or just help me go out there and serve 40 plus families a month, I want to give Tristan and Marcus opportunity to share their number so you have the opportunity to get in touch with somebody that can really serve you well here. So Tristan, if you give your number real quick and then Marcus, same thing. For sure, man. It's 985-788-8191. Uh, text me, call me anytime you need any help. Same here. Number 563-650. Five six zero six. All right, guys. There you have it. Let's go. See you soon.